All right, I'm live from an unknown location. But the New York Mets have absolutely stuck. The New York Yankees, they are cold as ice, just like the Mets. Aaron Judge being out has a big reason to do with that. Going to be talking a lot of baseball today. Obviously, the Knicks versus the Heat game three tomorrow, three o'clock. Going to be talking about that a lot today as well. And maybe a little bit of football as the show goes on. But nothing, no, none other to start off with the Mets because I think everybody knows that the New York Mets are absolutely one thing right now, and that's dog water. I think that's the best way to describe the New York Mets right now. They are currently 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games, as you see right there. Our pitching sucks, especially Max Scherzer. Going to be talking about Max in a little bit. Also going to be talking about the lineup, too. Lindor, Nimmo with his freaking idiotic base running uh yesterday and then buck show walter i'm starting to get on the i'm starting to get on buck a little bit because i'm starting to get pissed off by him and then just the roster construction alone like we we keep like dying for this power bat right this power bat this impact bat that's supposed to protect P, uh, P alonzo right we want cohen to go out there and get that guy or billy epler Right, we want that guy, but don't we already have that guy on our team? Isn't that guy playing shortstop for us right now? Isn't that the guy we expected to have? I put up a tweet about it last week. Francisco Lindor's stats with Cleveland versus his stats with New York across a hundred sixty-two game season, based off what it what he has done. He has over three hundred total bases per year in Cleveland. Less than 275 per year in New York. And it's not the juiced balls. Because I can go on and give you a, a long, 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 long list of guys who have actually improved offensively since the juice ball era. And yes, it was a juice ball. But at the end of the day, I'm not expecting Lindor to hit 30 plus bombs a year. I'm not expecting him to hit 300 plus. But. Do better than this? A 212 batting average, a 314 on base percentage? That's terrible. That is laughable. Laughable. If this guy wasn't making the money he was making and he didn't have the name Francisco Lindor, he would be cut because of the production that he is not producing. It's as simple as that. Now, will he be able to turn it around 100%? I think Lindor is... Everybody knows he is capable of turning this around. You have to be dumb if you don't realize that. Lindor, when he's at his best, he is one of the most dangerous hitters in all of baseball. All of baseball. He's not just the best shortstop or a top five shortstop in WRC+. plus. No, he's one of the most dangerous hitters in baseball. Not just a power hitter. Not just He's one of the best pure hitters in baseball when he's at his best. And he has yet to be at his best with the New York Mets for an extended period of time. We've seen it. We've seen it in stretches. Last year in the second half of the season, he went off. Yeah, he cooled down in the playoffs. And yeah, he sucks this year, but we all know. And yeah, I mean, yeah, he sucked in 2021, but we all know what he can do because we've seen it. We saw it in Cleveland. We saw it in stretches here. Now, I have high expectations for this guy. Is that fair? I don't know. I think that I think it is based off what he has done for Cleveland. And you even look at the time in, in the WBC, he was tearing it up. So we know that guy is somewhere, but where is he? Where is he? He needs to he needs to start picking it up. Because if Lindor picks, if Lindor was hidden like the Lindor we all know and love, the Mets would not be two and eight in their last ten games. Justin Verlander. Wouldn't throw a, a decent start yesterday, but the Mets offense gets shut out two to nothing. And that brings me into my next topic. Buck Showalter. 
Buck Showalter, yeah, Brandon Nimmo, idiotic, but shouldn't Brandon Nimmo know that? Shouldn't Nimmo know that? Also, Beatty got to play more. Same thing with Alvarez. I'm sick of seeing these guys get days off. Like, I get it when they first came up. Yeah, give them days off because they just got here. The Syracuse to New uh, the city or uh, for Brett Beatty's instance, Syracuse all the way to L.A. I get it. But why can't we play them more? And why is Mark Hanna still our, basically our everyday left fielder hitting less than 200? How is that? Po- How do we have a three hundred sixty-four million dollar payroll with a guy in left field hitting less than two hundred? I don't understand. I love Vogie, and I don't know why any Mets like anybody that shits on Vogie. You're stupid. He has done nothing wrong. He has a four hundred on base percentage. But you know whose problem? It is? It's not Vogie's fault. It's Buck and Epler, because Epler one. Why is why are we expecting Vogie to be the guy to be our DH that hits twenty plus bombs? He gets on. We know what Vogie is now. He is what he is. He's a guy who gets on base. He works the count, and he's got some pop here and there. Yeah, when he makes a good contact with it. But we know what he is. Tommy Pham. So we replace Darren Ruff with Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham sucks. He sucks. This Mets team is terrible. There's no other better way to put it. Francisco Lindor. He's overrated. At least right now. And since he's been a Met, in my opinion, I think Francisco Lindor has been the most overrated player in all of baseball since he became a New York Met. Because all I've heard is that this guy is the best shortstop in baseball, but the guy Andres Jimenez, who we traded him for, has done nothing but been better than Francisco Lindor. So the guy who we gave up from Lindor for Lindor is playing better. And I know a lot of Mets fans say, oh, we got to end this contract talk thing. But Jimenez is making a lot less money. And I'm sorry. When you have $364 million acclimated into your payroll and you are not just one step behind the Atlanta Braves, but you are, oh, like this much behind the Atlanta like. We are miles and miles and miles and miles behind the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves are one of the, they are arguably the best team in baseball. And I hate hearing, oh, well, the Philadelphia Phillies last year and the Atlanta Braves two years ago and the Nationals in 2019. Shut up. Shut up. Because that does not give the Mets a free pass when they have a three, when you put this much money, record breaking money into a team and you are a subpar team. That's terrible. That's embarrassing. That is flat out embarrassing. How do you commit $364 million into a payroll for them to just shit the bed every single game this year, basically? Because even the two games we did win in this terrible stretch, we shouldn't have even won because Buck Showalter, his idiotic self this year for some reason, I don't know why, I love Buck, but this year he's been an idiot, leaving Tommy Hunter in for way too long. Josh was right, left him in way too long. And we barely won that game. So these, these Mets, they don't suck. I'm overreacting when I say they suck. They could still turn it around. They have the guys to do it. Francisco Lindor, like I said, when he is on his best, he is one of the most one of the best pure hitters in baseball. But until then, until Lindor picks it up, Marte picks it up, until Buck figures it the hell out, until we maybe get another bullpen arm, until Max Scherzer figures it out because I'm going to be talking about him in just a moment. Don't think I'm not bringing up Max. Alonzo too. Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo, yeah, you had 10 home runs, but what have you done since? What has Pete Alonzo done since he hit that 10th home run? He's been silent. It's embarrassing that fans are like, like it's not embarrassing for the fans. It's embarrassing for the team that their fans are saying, 
We need a power bat. We need another power bat. But in reality, we have Pete Alonso and Francisco Lindor, two guys who are should be perennial all-stars. Perennial all-stars. That's what we expect them to be. That's how we talk about them. That's how this Mets team talks about them. They talk about Pete Alonso and Francisco Lindor as the best hidden duo in baseball. But those those two, Alonzo and Lindor, stink. They stink. Yeah, Alonzo hits 10 home runs, but he's batting under like 250 this year. That sucks. That sucks. And I don't want to hear, oh, the Phillies caught fire at the end of the year and look at what happened. Oh, the Atlanta Braves. The Mets aren't them. Just because that happened, it, do, it doesn't mean the Mets, that, that means that's going to happen for the Mets. Or the NL champions, the last NL champions, the last four NLGS champions, they've been 500 or or 17 and 12 at this point. Like, stop throwing all this shit at me. I don't want to hear it. The Mets are the Mets. And the Mets right now, they have a lot of flaws. Because when you look at what Billy Epler did, what did he do? And what did he do with LA? One. He relied on Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. And what is he doing here? He's relying on Pete Alonso and Lindor and, yeah, Nimmo and McNeil. And then outside of that, who does he get? He gets Tommy Pham to replace Darren Ruff. He keeps Daniel Vogel back. He gets, he keeps Scherzer, right? So we keep Scherzer. Instead of Bassett, now we have Kodai Senga. Instead of DeGrom, now we have Verlander. Instead of, Taiwan Walker, we have Jose Quintana. We literally have the same exact roster. Actually worse now because you take off Edwin Diaz. Yeah, David Robertson has been great, but Edwin Diaz was the best relief pitcher in arguably the last decade since Mariano Rivera retired. That's how good Edwin Diaz was last year. And we still didn't win the division. So the division, I think we can say it right now. The Atlanta Braves own. Can the Mets win the division? Yeah. But do I think they're going to? Hell no. Because the Atlanta Braves are light years ahead. And I said all the Mets have to do, all they have to do is stay in it until the deadline, make the moves to be made at the deadline. But why should fans even trust Billy Epler to make the right moves? When last year he tried to be cute, and brought in Daniel Vogel back and Darren Ruff. And then who'd he bring in as our relief pitcher? Michael Givens? Gonna let it reload. It's really, it's really rough times if you are a New York Mets fan. Not only because the Mets are the Mets, but it's also because our $40 million pitcher, Max Scherzer, is is terrible. It's terrible. He has over a five-year reg, dating back to last year, dating back to his last 10 starts in last year. He has over a four-year reg. He is lost. I'm not going to say that this guy is washed just yet, but why should Mets fans think otherwise? I mean, we won. We got the pitch clock, and he was saying, oh, I'm going to be cute and figure out ways to abuse the pitch clock. Oh, well, we haven't even seen that because – You've just been letting up hit after hit, hit after hit, hit after hit. Max Scherzer doesn't have the same stuff he used to have. It's plain and simple. He needs to figure it out. I don't know if it's mechanical. I don't know if it's anything else. But Max Scherzer is not the same Max Scherzer that he was when he was with the Washington Nationals or with the L.A. Dodgers. It's simple as that. If you look at his stats year by year, as he's gotten older, he's been deteriorating. So I'm not going to say this guy is completely washed up, but... I think that de- we can definitely say his best years are behind him. I don't think that's a hot take. And Scherzer's a guy who we have no ties to. No ties to. He's actually screwed the Mets over more than he's given us. When he was with the Nationals, when he even was even when he was with the Dodgers and the Mets sucked. He threw multiple no-hitters against this team. He takes $80 million from Steve Cohen to shit the bed against the Atlanta Braves in the most important series of the year and shit the bed against in the wild card game one. 
And then what does he do in his first five starts this year? <laughs> Was that five farts? Yeah, he has five farts so far. That's what Scherzer has gave the Mets this year. He's been terrible. There's no other better way to put how Max Scherzer has pitched this year. He's pitched like shit. It's terrible. And it's alarming because of his age. Like Verlander, he actually pitched pretty good yesterday. I'll give him that outside of the first inning. But Scherzer, it's alarming because Verlander had Tommy John. We've seen pitchers come back from Tommy John. Verlander also just won a Cy Young in the World Series last year. So I do have confidence in Verlander to get things going. But Max, why should fans have any belief that he can turn it around? Look at last year. Look at the way he ended a terrible way to end last year. The terrible start to this year. He's complaining about sticky sta- uh, sticky stuff now. What's going on with Max? And like I said, Verlander also, he had Tommy John. We've seen pitchers come back from Tommy John. Scherzer, he's had shoulder stuff. He's had now oblique stuff. Scherzer, I, it's not, his best days are behind him. There's no other better way to put it. We're paying the most for Max Scherzer at any point in his career, but we're getting the worst version of him. Think about that. So maybe Billy Epler. I love Steve Cohen and I love the idea. Sometimes you got to try new things when you're right into the new thing. So I'm not going to blame Steve Cohen. But I'm blaming Billy Epler and I'm blaming Buck Showalter for the game management. Hell yeah. So Max Scherzer sucks. Let's wrap this Mets segment up. Max Scherzer sucks. The Mets are 2-8 and eight in their last 10 games because Buck Showalter sucks and Pete Alonzo is cold as ice. And Francisco Lindor, I'm looking at you because I'm starting to think you're overrated. Plain and simple. Yankees, they're lost. Are they in trouble? I don't know. Aaron Judge, he's out for a little bit. Giancarlo Stanton's still out. Rodon's still out. We had a little bit of an update on him. Um, they're 17 and 15, last place in the AL East. They suck right now, just like the just like across town in Queens. The New York Mets suck just as much as they do. Um, Anthony Rizzo has definitely cooled it down. Aaron Boone, I mean, I don't think you what can Aaron Boone do? The fact that they're 17 and 15, I think you got to give him a little bit of credit for. You look at this roster, there's nobody in the lineup outside of, like their best hitter right now is Anthony Rizzo. And he's hitting 289. There's only one guy on the Yankees roster this year that's hidden over 270, and that is Anthony Rizzo. That's sad. Anthony Volpe hitting 221. He's actually kind of picked it up a little bit, but that over four the other day didn't look too good. A lot of offers for Volpe this year. Volpe, I don't know, man. Brett Beatty, on the other hand, that guy's raking. Huh? But not your boy Volpe. He's got a 221 bad and average, a 325 on base percentage. You know what's sad though? Volpe, Volpe is being he's terrible this year, right? 221 bad and average. But he's got a higher bad and average than Francisco Lindor. I just want to put that out there. So, but there's nobody else besides Anthony Rizzo in the Yankees lineup that's hitting over 270. Um, the pitching rotation it's carried by Garrett Cole. The injuries are really deteriorating this rotation. Um, I I just don't know what the Yankees can do. I mean, Ian Hamilton has been a beast out of the pen. That's been one thing that has like, and same thing with Michael King. So you look at their bullpen, it's fine, but it's the starting rotation that needs their guys back. That Brian Cashman, the, the GMs in New York are terrible. Brian Cashman brings in Rodon. Yes, I've already said it numerous times. Never pitched over 180 innings in his entire career. And they they bank on him. And they bank on Nestor Cortez to have the season that he did again. And they banked on Luis Severino to really step it up. And you look at those four to start the rotation. And you're like, damn, this Yankees rotation is freaking loaded. Until they all get hurt. And Nestor Cortez really shows that it was a one-year wonder. Garrett Cole, now he's the best pitcher in baseball on Undoubtedly right now, but the Yankees lineup is terrible. There's not a single threat in that lineup. Not a single threat in that lineup. So the Yankees, they have just as much questions as they do as the Mets. And whereas the Mets, they do have guys that you expect to get going. The Yankees, who do you expect to get going? Kleber Torres? Huh. Isaiah Kiner-Falefa? Huh. 
Who do you expect to get? Jose Trevino? Huh. Yeah, he had a walk-off the other night. This Yankees team, they're just as much lost as the New York Mets. But they're, like, that's the thing, though. Aaron Boone has done a great job with this team, in my opinion. Buck Showalter has done a terrible job with the Mets, in my opinion. The Yankees, they can turn it around if they get Aaron Judge back and their pitching rotation back. And the same thing with the Mets. So they're really in the same realm, except Buck is bucking up. And their GMs both suck. They committed to the wrong players. I think we can all state that. I think every Mets fan, if they went back two years ago, they would say, don't sign Max Scherzer. I think they would say that. And I think with the Yankees, they would say, don't sign Carlos Rodon because he hasn't even pitched yet. And why should you have any confidence that he is going to pitch anytime soon when all the updates on Carlos Rodon has just been setback after setback after setback? And he's a guy, like I said, who has never pitched in over 180 innings in his entire career. It came out a day ago that Rodon is undergoing more tests. It's it's past May 1st. We're already in May, and Rodon can't even pick up a freaking baseball. So this Yankees team, they got just as much question marks as, they do, as the Mets do. Um... I'm not going to spend too much time with the Yankees. I'm going to take a little break, get this video to start reloading back up, and then I'm going to talk about Game 3 with the New York Knicks because, oh, yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be a good game. Actually, you know what? Instead of a break, let's just breeze through this episode. Knicks versus Heat Game 3. But first, before I do talk about the Game 3, let's talk about the game, I mean, the Big 3. Do the Knicks have a big three? Well, Julius Randle can be considered into the big three, obviously. And same thing with Jalen Brunson. But the question mark was R.J. Barrett. Was R.J. Barrett going to make this team have a big three? Yeah, yeah, I think I think we have a big three. With the way that R.J. Barrett has looked in the playoffs, I think you can't say, this, this guy's a star. He's a star. What he's been able to do in the playoffs, 26 points, and he was kept out of the last few minutes uh, of game two. And not because he played bad, only because Tibbs made an adjustment. Shout out Tibbs. Been on a roll this playoffs. R.J. Barrett, though, is a star. Jalen Brunson is a superstar. Julius Randle is an all-star. So doesn't that make them a big three? So we're talking about the Boston Celtics. We're talking about the Golden State Warriors or the Philadelphia 76ers or the Lakers or who else are finals contenders this year? The Nuggets. Like you give me all these teams. Everybody will throw all these teams at you that have big threes. But when you really look at the Knicks, I think they have a big three too. Because Jalen Brunson, like I said, he's a superstar in my opinion. Jay, uh, Julius Randle's an all-star, and R.J. Barrett's a star. With the way that he's performed this postseason, there's no other better way to put it. R.J. Barrett has proved that he's a star. He he deserves a spot on this team going into next year, and he's earned that contract this year because of the way he's performed in the playoffs. The, uh, the Knicks right now, they're not even favored to win that game tomorrow night, which is insane. Um, Jimmy Butler hasn't even been been ruled in yet. He's planning to play Saturday. So we'll likely get full-on Heat versus the full-on Knicks. And I, I said Knicks in six. I think I'm still sticking to the Knicks in six. I think tomorrow we pull off that win. But before I, – I, yeah, let's just get right into the game. Tomorrow we're going to pull off that win. I'm going to go over my three keys right now, just like I do every game, every game. Three keys. Key number one, Josh Hart. Josh Hart's got to continue to be the heart and soul of this team. He's been nothing but spectacular, almost getting a triple-double every single game. His his playmaking, his rebounding, his defense, and his scoring at will. You saw it the other night. He missed that corner three shot. What does he do? He follows his shot, grabs his own rebound, and gets an end one. Josh Hart plays with heart. It's cliche, but it's true. What's key number two? Key number two, Julius Randle. Players this time. 
It's not uh, – yeah, usually it's the way they play, but this time it's players. You need Josh Hart, and you need Julius Randle. You saw Julius Randle. He had a spectacular game too. Julius Randle's a guy who's really struggled in the postseason. Yeah, he's really – let me get a sip of water right there. But Julius Randle's a guy who struggled mightily in the postseason throughout – well, one, in his first stint in the postseason with the Knicks two years ago and in his first couple of games against the Cavs. Um, he, he struggled, but he was nothing but spectacular in game two against the Heat. He had 25 points, 12 rebounds, eight assists. He almost got a triple-double, two, three of nine from three, so he cashed three threes. Didn't miss a single free throw. So Julius Randle, and he was a plus 14 on the court as well. So Julius Randle, he's my key number two. So I have Josh Hart and Julius Randle as my first two keys uh, to win game two. I mean, game three. And key number three to win game three. Defense. No better way to put it. Defense. Got to have Emmanuel quickly playing defense. Got to have Josh Hart playing defense. RJ Barrett, Quentin Grimes. Those guys have to be all over the perimeter because we cannot keep giving up the threes that we are giving up. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Because it's honestly, it's not. I'm not going to say it's embarrassing, but Gabe Vincent, I was talking about it with Top Bunk Sports after game one. You know, um, Actually, I was talking about it with Chris after game one, too. Um, the amount of threes that Gabe Vincent scored is he took 12 threes in game one. He took 12 threes in game two. His last three games, Gabe Vincent has taken 12 threes. Stop letting this guy take threes. That simple. Can we close out on this guy? Because five of... Right now, he's he's 9 of 24 from the three-point arc in two games against the Knicks. That's unacceptable. The perimeter defense needs to be there, and that's why it's my key number three. Because guys like Gabe Vincent, guys like Duncan Robinson, guys like Caleb Martin, guys like Kevin Love, they are going to kill us. They're going to kill us from behind the arc, just like they did in game two. And that's the key, my last key for this victory tomorrow night. We got to play perimeter defense, lights out perimeter defense. Because I'm adding it up right now. We had four threes from Gabe, Gabe Vincent, three threes from Max Struess. We had two threes from Kevin Love. Caleb Martin made four. Duncan Robinson had three. And then Haywood Highsmith, he had one three two. So that's eight. What is that? 10, 13. That's 17 threes the Knicks gave up. And the Knicks, well, let's see. You know, they had a lot of threes last game. They had three from Randall, six from Jalen Brunson, which I'll tell you, Jalen Brunson ain't making six threes every night. So that's nine right there. They had 11, and then RJ hit five. And RJ ain't hitting five every night either. So it took 16 three point shots for the Knicks to beat the Jimmy Butler list Miami Heat. So the Miami Heat, they ain't going down cold, they ain't going down easy. I still got the Knicks in six. I still got them winning tomorrow. But my three keys, Josh Hart. Because if Josh Hart don't have a good game, then it feels like the Knicks don't have a good game. Julius Randle, because when Julius Randle is going, then the whole entire Knicks team is going. You saw with the in the first half when Randle was back, this Knicks team had energy. They were playing loose. They were playing free. They were playing with basically with a vengeance. And then key number three. Perimeter defense. You cannot give up 17 threes. You cannot give up five threes to Gabe Vincent. You cannot give up uh, three threes to Max Schroes and, and, and three threes to Duncan Robinson off the bench. It cannot happen. So control the three-point arc, and let's get that game three win. And the Knicks have a big three. Let me know what you think if the Knicks have a big three in the comments below. But I'm going to dip out of here because uh, I'm in an undisclosed location. Now nah, I'm up in Saratoga. Um, so I'm not back at home in my home studio. I'll be back in my home studio tomorrow. I'm going to hit up what's the static pod. Uh, I'm going to hit up Chris, see if he wants to maybe get a live going for tomorrow. And, yeah, let's go Knicks. Hopefully the Mets can get it rolling tonight or uh, not. 
we got Kodai Senga on the mound, so hopefully he can he can maybe give Mets fans some hope because he's been struggling in his past couple starts, especially with the walks. They've been increasing left and right, start after start. We need to see the Yankees give Yankees fans hope. Maybe somebody, somebody's got to step it up, whether it's Rizzo, whether it's Glaber Torres, somebody not named Aaron Judge because he's on the IL. They need to get it going. Garrett Cole, he's pitching this Sunday. Hopefully he can continue to rock. And then the Jets, I told, I was going to talk about them today, but I don't really have that much time. I got shit to do. So I'm out of here. Deuces. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you're a new listener, I'm almost at 150 subscribers. So go hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button for this video. Also, go check out my most recent video clips. I had one about RJ Barrett and OB Topping going off in this round. And they have been going off in this round. And I also got another video up about Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Are they Super Bowl or bust? So yeah, go check those out. I'm out.